So what's new in Adobe Photoshop CS2? One thing that has not changed is the fact that it's still, after all this time, the industry standard image editing application. Photoshop is also still the virtual Swiss Army Knife application, meaning that it can serve so many industries for so many different purposes. You want to paint? Check. You want to create a texture for a 3D model? Check. You want to color a comic book cover? Check. You want to enhance or repair photographs? Check. And so on. It's all in there. As it has always been, there are tools to do pretty much anything you can imagine in Photoshop. But in version CS2, quite a bit has also been added, all of it cool and all designed to increase your productivity in a huge way. I'll do a brief rundown of all the exciting new features you'll be playing with, starting off with the Adobe Bridge. The new bridge is actually a replacement for the file browser, and it's an independent application that you can use with Photoshop, Illustrator, and the rest of the Creative Suite, or totally on its own. You can use it to find and preview images, documents, movies, and anything else in your hard drive you may need for your project. Or if you choose, you can keep the bridge open all the time as an amazing visual search tool to find files in your computer at any time. The bridge, like Photoshop itself, lets you create a custom workspace so that each person in your studio or home can work in the way that best suits them. One thing that always drove me crazy was not being able to actually get a preview of what a certain font would look like in Photoshop before I applied it. I'm going to go back to Photoshop, make sure I have my type tool selected, and check out this. Look on the right hand side, we are able to see what a font looks like for the first time before you actually go ahead and start typing. So you're going to save a whole lot of time with this feature alone. Photoshop has a new way of working with layers now too, which lets you shift click to select layers from within the layers palette. For example, I want to select all these layers. There's no link here. Well, it's down here, of course, but I'm going to go ahead and click this layer, shift click, shift click, and now I can move all the items on all three of those layers. And all I did was basically copy elements from the original and move it around. What if I don't want to use the layers palette? What if I don't want to click on a layer? Well, you can command control click on a layer within a document. For example, I'll command control click on the dog move him around, I'll undo that, command control click on the broom, move it around, and once again command control click on the rope. A huge time saver and one of my favorite things. Now I want to show you some of the special effects and the first one my friends the vanishing point tool is the definition of love. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the dog layer here and I'm gonna go to my filter menu and choose vanishing point. What this does is it gives you a way to clone things in perspective. I'm going to be very sloppy about this because I'm going to show you how to do this later on. But I'm going to grab my stamp tool and I'm going to just sample an area like so and I'm going to click and look at that. I can paint an area away in perspective. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean I, I, I almost hit the floor when I did this the first time. I was like look! Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because that's just beautiful beyond words. Since we're on the topic of special effects, you'll really dig the image warping feature that lets you turn images into putty so you can warp around objects such as awnings and so on. I'm going to go ahead and hide these layers here so we can just focus on the dog. I'm going to go to select all and now I'm going to choose edit and I'm going to choose transform and warp and now watch this. I can really do some really cool things with this tool and the options are just absolutely amazing. I mean, You can get something on a flag imagine that you can get a nice flag effect and so on so I'm gonna go ahead and hit escape and undo that some of the other new features in Photoshop CS2 is the new camera raw tool that allows photographers to work with the pure information contained in the digital shots even more goodness for photographers comes in the new filters such as lens correction which lets you fix distortions the noise reduction filter helps you to eliminate noise in digital camera images and there is the sweet alternative to the unsharp mask which is called the smart sharpen filter it's a great tool for sharpening images that are blurry or just need some oomph added to their crispness and we'll talk about all these later on smart objects are a new feature as well allowing you to work with files that are linked to higher resolution originals giving you tons of control over scaling with no loss in resolution you may remember that if you scaled an object on its own layer in Photoshop and then try to scale it larger you'd wind up with a very pixelated layer image smart objects changes all that we'll talk about all these features of course later on Adobe provides you with a huge amount of control you can restore palette locations keyboard shortcuts menus independently of one another you can move things around you can save custom workspaces in all 
I have to say this upgrade is massive, significant, and packed with features I use on a regular basis now. It has made working in Photoshop more like playing with a new toy than an application for work. Honestly, I have actually tried to think of what Adobe could possibly add next and have no idea. I think you really enjoy the new version and have a great time learning more about Photoshop CS2.